So here's a quick video to walk through the bisection method. You have a choice of either doing one of the bonus suggestions, like an algorithm, or you can try out this bisection method. I will show this to you a couple different ways in Excel and C++, but first let me show you the main idea in Mathematica. So this is a um, math software. We'll do math software at the very end of the semester. And this is just one of the platforms that you can do calculus and algebra and plotting, and it's just basically a calculator. Okay, so bisection method is a numerical solution that is used to solve an equation. So let's say we have some equation. I'm going to make sure our variables are cleared out here in Mathematica first. So maybe this is our equation, right? So we have some function of x. And that is going to be 3x cubed. And you can do any equation that you want here. So this is just kind of a random example, right? So we have some equation. And you can plot this equation out. Maybe we're going to plot it for x is, I don't know, negative 100 to 100 or something. And what we want to do is find out where this crosses zero. So if I go ahead and, and solve for what point this equation crosses zero, so we're going to solve for where this equals zero for, for x. And this guy, let me put this into a number. Okay, so somewhere around negative 0.59, we can ignore these imaginary solutions. This will cross zero. If I change that graph around to really um, hone in on that, maybe we'll see it better. So I'm going to say negative 1 to 0. Okay, so you can see that right here at where x equals 0.59, that that function crosses zero. Okay, so let's say it's some you know horribly complex function and we don't want to go through the algebra to solve it. What the bisection method does is it starts with some range. So in Excel, what I did is I started with a lower range of negative five and an upper range of five. So if I look at the, what's happening on this graph from negative five to five, the important thing here is that I'm going from a negative number to a positive number inside of this range. So I know that the solution is somewhere between negative 5 and positive 5. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to find what that function is at the lower value. So I'm plugging in negative 5 cubed minus 5 squared. And then I'm also plugging in what that function is at this upper value. And then I'll take each of these, divide it by 2, and find what the function is doing right in the middle. And I'm going to decide, is, is this happening between negative 301 or positive 301? And and the solution is going to be somewhere between this negative and positive number. So it's in the set, it's in the lower half of this. Right? So if I if I split this up to negative 5 versus 0 versus 5, by looking at what number is negative and what number is positive, I can say, oh, I go from negative to positive between these two limits. So I'm going to I'm going to move down and I know my solution is in between these new numbers. So now I'm going to reassign my lower and my upper limits so that I'm now looking in this lower half of the solution, right? And so then I look I plug it in at -5 and I'm going to call my new upper limit 0. And the midpoint between those is now 2.5. So I now am, am kind of narrowing down the range and deciding 
which two numbers my solution is in between. So if I look at this, negative to negative, I'm not pr crossing zero here. But positive to negative, I am crossing zero here. So that means that my new solution is in the upper half. So it's somewhere between zero and negative 2.5. That's where my solution is. So the bisection numerical method, what it does is it consecutively reassigns my upper and lower limits to kind of narrow down on that solution. So graphically what that looks like, so initially we started with negative five to five, and we looked at what's happening at, at kind of those, those three values. So what's happening at negative five and what's happening right there in the middle and what's happening at positive five. Here, I'm gonna pop this up above my plot. Okay, so, so we evaluated the function at those three points. We decide, oh, it's gonna be in, in this negative range somewhere. So now I reassign kind of a new one. So, so my new lower limit is gonna be, stay at negative five, but now my upper limit is gonna be zero and the new middle between those two is negative 2.5. So you can kind of keep narrowing in on this guy. So now I'm gonna go from negative five up to zero, right? And I'm gonna look at it somewhere in here and you keep just chopping these guys in half and slowly stepping towards the solution. So you can, you can set this up in Excel that decides if I should try and go up or if I should go down and use that to define my new limits. What that looks like in C++, okay, so I have the user and the user in these numerical solutions has to provide a starting value. So let's say we have some equations, three X cubed minus X squared plus one, and we're going to evaluate this at some lower value, we'll call the lower value A, so we're plugging in A for our X cubed, and then we're going to evaluate it at some upper value B, so here we're evaluating that three X cubed minus B squared at some lower value B, and, and we plug those numbers in and says, okay, this is what's happening at those two values. If I did not have a solution in between there, okay? So for one side to be positive and one side to be negative, a positive times a negative would give me a negative number. So if I have positive and positive or negative and negative, if this ends up if this little multiplication ends up being larger than one, that means I didn't pick the correct range. Like my solution is not in between A and B. So then you would have some little thing that says, oh, I'm sorry, those, those numbers you gave me, there's no solution in there. You're gonna have to give me a different starting point. And so then it's gonna go back up to start, so this is a this is an example of a of a go to statement. So you can you can call this any type thing you want. You can call it line one or redo or, or whatever you want. So it's going to pop the program back up here, ask the user for new values, and then it'll come and check those new values and make sure that that the solution is in between these two numbers. Okay, so. So if, if we have the correct starting point, then it will go to this else statement and we're, we need a middle value. So we have the lower starting value and the upper starting value. Here's our middle value is just kind of A plus B divided by two. So we can evaluate it at the middle. So here's the new function evaluated at the middle. So again, three X squared, 
x cubed minus x squared plus 1. So it's, it's this same equation, only now it's being evaluated for this new middle value. Okay, so, so the question we're going to ask ourselves is, is a solution between the middle and the lower, or is it between the middle and the upper? Okay, so if, if that lower solution is negative and the middle value is positive, then we're going to reassign what our upper limit is. So instead of the upper limit being what the user originally told the program it was, we're going to say, oh, our new upper limit is now what the middle value used to be. If the solution is different, then we're going to make the lower limit what the middle value is. So we're going to reevaluate it after assigning what our new A and B values are and keep doing this over and over and over again and put a control statement in here so that it doesn't get stuck in an infinite loop. So walking around this a hundred times, you'll never get exactly zero, <laughs> probably won't get a zero. You'll just get closer and closer as you go through it. So, so put some kind of a control st structure in here. So we'll just count one, two, three. And when it gets to 100, it's all over. We're going to stop the program. So we'll keep, we'll keep doing this again and again and again. So let's go up here and find Find where did again go. So it will go again and again and again until we get to the closest value. Okay, so let's go ahead and, and run this, and then I can run it in debugger mode, and you can kind of see, see it work. So for our equation, let's see, we decided the answer was negative 0.5. I'm going to do kind of a large range to start out with, so a lower value of negative 100 and an upper value of 100. And then you can kind of watch it go through 100 iterations. I've got some C outs in here, so you can watch this change around. And the final value we got, 0.598, so that's, that is actually pretty darn close to what our answer was, right? 0.598193. So yay, that's that's really good. And this would work if I wanted to solve a different equation, then I would put I would put that different equation in here. And you can do that all in one um, one program. You can make maybe a function of it that evaluates it in a function that's a little bit more efficient. But that is the idea of the bisection method. So it's, it's a little bit challenging. And it might be a good idea to think through the logic of it in, in an Excel spreadsheet first, where, where each row of this would be walking around that loop. But anyways, that's, there's a lot of different numerical methods for, for solving problems like this. And you can take actually an entire class on numerical methods Bisection is one of the um, most intuitive and most used methods out there, though. So let's go ahead and debug this. Before I debug this, I'm going to change the number of loops it does. So instead of going around this 100 times, because I don't want to continue, continue, continue. So I'm only going to do this 10 times instead. We won't get as accurate of a result but you'll be able to see how it's bouncing around in these loops. We just won't do it a hundred times, so a little overkill. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and put some stop signs here. I'll let it ask us for information, and then I'm gonna let us see when it pops up here to again, and evaluates it at the new at the new levels. And then I will also, let's go ahead and put a stop sign so that we can see where in the else statement it is taking us. So we can watch this count as we go again and again and again. 
So, and here's where we can, we can end it. So here's the ending one. Okay, I don't want to put too many stop signs. Maybe we can watch, watch this else as well. Okay, so here we go. Let's debug. And we'll go ahead and we'll watch what A is doing, what B is doing, what the middle is doing. That's, yeah, that's probably all we need to do here. Okay, I'll go ahead and start this up. So it's going to go through the program, enter a lower starting value. And I'll go ahead and enter just negative 5 this time. I'll give it something closer to the solution. Upper starting value of 5, so it's going to bounce back and forth between here. So here we have our lower value, our upper value, and we haven't defined a middle value yet. But we're going to evaluate the function when x equals negative 5, we'll then evaluate the function when x equals 5. We'll figure out where we are in here. So, so it just updated what e is. The next thing we'll do is we'll update what f is. So this is at the negative 5 and 5 upper values. So now we can say, okay, negative number, positive number, we know it crosses zero somewhere between those two numbers. So now let's figure out what our middle value is. You notice it's because we didn't initialize it, it's got some crazy value over here. But as we continue through, now we have, so zero is right in between negative five and five here. And because we know where we're at, so, so we say what, what is, should we go to the to the top half or the lower half? And we're going to reassign values based on which side of this we are on. So we're looking at now a middle value of negative 2.5 that's going to be between negative 5 and 0. So see how we now have a new value for B. B isn't 5 anymore. It's 0. And you can watch over here as we, as we go through the loop. So we're reassigning the, that lower and upper value based on which half the solution is in. So now A is no longer negative 5. We know the solution is between here and here. So it's, it's, a, it's a good example of if statements, go to is one way to do it. There's, there's a bunch of different ways to do this, but use the debugger, watch how it's progressing through the code, make sure you're keeping track of, of how all of your variables are changing. So now we've been through the loop four times. And you can see that we're getting kind of closer and closer to the answer. So as we evaluate this, we can see that, that our evaluations are, are getting closer and closer to zero each time we have it. And if we go all the way up to 10, so where's the new middle? So we're, we're going up and down. And it's not going around the loop a hundred times, so we won't get exactly, exactly that answer, but negative 0.58. So this is this is getting pretty, pretty close to what it needs to be. It's not all the way there. Okay, so then we're gonna say this is the closest we've come. And it's yeah, negative 0.6. So it's within, you know. That's, that's getting pretty close. And the more times around the loop you go, the closer it will get to the solution. Okay, hopefully that was helpful.